Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Your Way workshop for October. This is leading into the November, December creative journey on planning. And tonight we're going to be talking all about creative hubs. Uh, before we jump into our conversation, we're going to do two things. One, I'll just give you a few ground rules, particularly if you are new to the conversation or it's been a long time since you participated. And then I'm also going to share just a couple slides on what a creative hub is. So I appreciate you being here with that level of curiosity. I know some of you are very avid creative hub users, uh, but I want to make sure that we start this conversation on the same same playing field with a kind of same general understanding of what this tool is. So a couple things for you to know. Um, tonight, we're going to be going into breakout groups. That's the style of this conversation. I'll be dividing you into groups of three to five um, fellow participants. It's going to be a combination of uh, our paid members, as well as those of you who are not members. We get to meet a lot of people who are involved in Simple Scrapper. And um, I know a lot of you are also podcast listeners. And I think that's one of the things that makes these events so unique and special is that we get to have these, you know, as close to in-person conversations as we can um, about something that we all love. And so this year, this is our sixth and final Your Way workshop of this particular, the 2022 season. And we have a brand new series of something a little bit different coming next year, but I'm excited to kind of conclude um, a year of this particular uh, theme of workshop. And then I think this is two years of doing the Your Way workshop and breakout groups, plus we've done a few more beyond that. Um, I hope, I know I see many returning guests here, so I know you guys appreciate these types of conversations. So again, we're gonna be going into small groups a little bit, and at the end, we'll come back together and share takeaways, lessons learned, aha moments. So that's what I want you to be thinking about is what am I hearing that's new to me? What am I hearing that I want to try? What's interesting or unique or different? Or even what am I learning about myself just by sharing my own experiences? Sometimes when we're talking about what we know, what we've done, we, we develop that new knowledge just by sharing. And then with that, I want to remind you to, to share generously and to also know that you're in a safe space to, to share openly and honestly, and that when we come back together, that's the opportunity to kind of filter um, the depth of response and go for those takeaways because we want to make sure you can have very real and genuine conversations in the small groups, which is also why they are not recorded. We're only uh, recording this full group session here. And so when we're done, I go and I chop out all the blank space when it's just me sitting here. And then, um, so, you, so those of you who are watching the recording are just seeing this, the full group portions. All right, does anyone have any questions about the logistics? Let me get this going here. As I said, this is super brief, but I wanted to make sure that we are all in the same place when it comes to a creative hub. So this all started, oh gosh, I don't know exactly how many years ago, a good number of years ago now. I think it was in the like 2016 range when I kept identifying the same kind of problems that we as scrapbookers, myself included, face. We're overwhelmed by way too many ideas, so many different options. These things are scattered all over the place on sticky notes and bins and closets. You know, everything is everywhere and too much of it is still just stuck in our head as ideas and want to do's and would love to do's and forgot to do's. And this makes it hard for us to find focus to actually move forward because we're just feeling all frazzled and swirly in our heads and in our stuff. And then all this together leads to even more unfinished projects, unfinished classes, unused supplies, because we can't kind of keep moving forward with intention and uh, clarity and focus. And so from that, we have a lot of different tools. And this is why I shared the, the image of the focus finder here, that may be a tool that you've worked with of ours. 
But these are some of the core problems that we solve here at Simple Scrapper. And one of the ways we do that is by encouraging you to create, to build a creative hub. So what this is, is one home for your creative life where you can store story and layout ideas, project plans, uh, photo management tracking lists, uh, projects uh, that you've already begun and where you are in that, what needs to be done next, the classes you've purchased, even um, bits of information, particularly those who choose a digital format may want to uh, cull down, say something like a Pinterest board or your Instagram folders of all the inspiration to here's those specific unique pieces that I want to scrap lift or that I want to use to inspire a December daily page and things like that. And the cool thing about this is you can personalize it completely to how you scrapbook. Um, I've shared various printables and things over the years, but when it came down to it, every single one of us wants to keep track of different things and in a different way. So it is so impossible to prescribe how you how you should do this because I don't believe there is any one way you should do this. And we see that by the whole just breadth of formats and styles and sizes that that our members and our broader Simple Scrapper community have, have used to create their creative, to build their creative hub. And then I also wanted to emphasize that as we talk about this tonight, this tends to be a slightly more functional first project, particularly for those who I see having success with it. Um, for those who want to add creative touches, whether that's in the overall format or stickers and stamping as you go along, great, by all means do that, but don't let that get in the way. Um, I think those who have maybe not had as much success with their creative hub built something pretty and then it felt maybe even too precious to use. And I think we've all done, been there, done that, maybe even bought a pretty book from, from Barnes and Noble back when we all went to bookstores all the time and, and hoarded it forever and would never write in it. So I know that many of you out there are just like me and have those. So we want to really focus on what can we do to make this a functional, usable tool for us. And so with that, there really is two big options. You can go the paper route. You can have, you know, a perfect bound. I have, that's my preference for a lot of my own planning, I know I have a really small picture right now, but I have a lot of perfect bound planners because that's what I really like. You can use ring bound from, you know, the small Franklin Covey style planners all the way up to, you know, three ring binder. You can use your disc bound, your happy planner type thing, or you can even, you can even, or how do I say this? Um, and when you're organizing the information, many of our creative hub users find that a bullet journal format is helpful because there's always things that you're going to want to add. So using that index with page numbers type format often works well versus sections because you might change your mind as you go along. And then the flip side of that is using a digital solution. Um, my actual creative hub is in Trello. And you can see a sneak peek. This was this is this year's Creative Hub. Last year's is in one of our classes. And I even have a template for you um, for how to build a Creative Hub in Trello. You can use Asana or Notion or Evernote. They're all kind of similar tools. They all work a little bit differently and are structured differently. Differently, but I would recommend if there's one of those tools that you're already using for other types of information management, whether that's for work or home renovations or your grocery list or whatever you use, consider whether that tool you already use could also house this information for your creative hub. Um, while there are certain circumstances where you might want to be a paper plus digital person, that also creates kind of uh, separation and may possibly perpetuate the problem of having information in too many places and not knowing where it is. So I wanna encourage you to select one as your primary. It doesn't mean, for example, if you your Creative Hub is in Trello, that you don't ever write a note down somewhere, but if you ever wanna save that note for the long term, then you're gonna to wanna to somehow digitize it by photographing it or transcribing it into, into Trello. So thinking of one is what is, what is that one place 
where this information is going to live. And your decision will be governed by your need for structure. Do you like, you know, even pre pre-formatted structure within your pages? Um, or pre-formatted sections? Do you like dividers and tabs and things like that? Or you just want it all blank? Um, do you like visual? Do you like the ability and freedom to move things around? And how portable do you want it? And what does that look like for you? Does that look like bringing something physical with you or using your phone or tablet on the go? So just thinking about those things and what has worked well for you in the past in terms of something that you keep turning to. Now, I would say most Creative Hub users, and I think this is going to come out in our conversation, this, this isn't something that you're probably turning to every single day. Uh, we're talking about, you know, once a week when you want to make a new layout, what's that next story that you want to turn, you know, uh, choose from your list? Or uh, once a month, you go and check off some of the goals that you had set and make sure that, that you're on track with that. You know, document a few victories. Um, whether you're counting time spent or things completed, you pop in when that's done and then you pop back out again. So this is a kind of a little bit less often of a tool versus your everyday planner. All right, and here's just another picture here. This is what my Creative Hub looks like right now. I like to organize mine by this create, corral, connect, and consume structure. That's something that we have inside the focus finder as well as kind of permeates everything that we do inside the membership as well to be able to constantly remind myself that my my goals and my objectives and scrapbooking as well as my whole creative life are beyond just the things that I'm making it's being organized it's connecting with others and making sure that I'm you know learning new things and trying new things and really having kind of a rich well-rounded experience and then inside the membership, we do have two different classes that help you get started. The first one, which was created back in that 2016 timeframe, I think, was building your creative hub. And this shares kind of an overarching framework that you can use and lots of different options for things that you can include. Um, even, you know, different inspiration pieces, um, how to really start a creative hub with your why and scrapbooking in mind, we definitely take you back to the beginning and really help you think about, okay, why do I wanna create this tool and what do I need to put in it for it to be useful to me? And then uh, the beginning of last year, I released the Trello Habit, which is taking the idea of the Creative Hub and teaching you how to build that inside of Trello as a tool. So we have two different options there inside the membership. I know some of you have already taken it and some of you might be interested, but if you are interested in membership, um, you can just go to this website, simplescrapper.com slash membership to learn more about it. And I'm definitely available to answer any questions for you. Um, feel free to email me or, or reach out in another way. All right. So with that, let's jump in to our outline for today. I'm going to put that here in the chat for everyone. Here's our agenda if you don't have it in your email. So we have three questions that we're going to tackle when it comes to creative hubs. So number one, do you have a creative hub, even if you haven't really called it that yet? What format is it and does that format work well for you? Number two, what are the types of details or plans you would like to include in a creative hub? And where does that information live now, which might be in your head slash nowhere? And number three, how can you make sure a creative hub is a productivity tool and not an abandoned project? I think that's something that we are all guilty of, of getting something together with great intentions and then somehow not using it. So what are the, what are the factors that lead to success with a new a new avenue for organizing information and supporting yourself. Okay, any questions? Let's start getting the breakout groups going here. We'll go 14 rooms here. 
And we are going to do, because um, the, the way the time was scheduled tonight, we are going to actually do 12 minutes, which I know some of you might appreciate because I know that sometimes it's really hard to get your conversation all wrapped up in that amount of time. So 12 minutes. All right, so I'm going to send you off. It's going to ask you to, to accept the move to your designated breakout room. And if you have any problems, you can uh, raise your hand, summon me to your room, or just pop back in here. Um, but yeah, first question, do you have a creative hub and is it working well for you? All righty. Um, hopefully everyone had someone to talk to. I think we made too, a few too many rooms. And so some of them were a little smaller than expected. So I forgot about them. When I put people into rooms, all of a sudden, some people just leave. <laughs> so, but hopefully we will recreate the rooms and we're going to recreate a smaller number of rooms this time so that we can make sure that you have a good number of people. All right, our second question, and this is really, I think is the heart of it. What are the types of things, the details and the plans that you would like to include in a creative hub? And where does that information live right now, if anywhere at all? So I think this is going to be really interesting to see the types of things that you do want to include. And also the other side of that, what are the things that you don't you don't actually want to include? We've all made lists that we never referenced again. So I think not uh, creating extra work for ourselves is sometimes helpful to think about. All right, let's jump back in. These groups look a little bit better here. All right, have fun. Righty. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, so abrupt when they say that. Okay. Hopefully, that room size is a tiny bit better. Let me create the rooms one more time here. Last question. This is kind of hard, but how can you make sure that your creative hub is a productivity tool and not an abandoned project? We talked earlier about like maybe making it not too pretty, um, making sure that it's kind of within the vein of things and tools and systems that you already use. Um, can you put it in the back of something that you already use or in the same app so that it's not just this another thing? We don't want it to be a project. We want it to be a tool that supports you. All right, 12 more minutes, and then we'll come back together to share all your thoughts and ideas. I don't remember having that announcement every single time before. Is that new? I don't remember you seeing it, like having it come through the everybody's audio at the same time. All right. No, it's okay. not new. Not new? I do think if like, every time you come back to the main room, it reminds you now that the, part, the recording's happening. Yeah. probably a legal thing they have to let you know you're being recorded. yeah I think it's it's not been always but I think it's been the six months maybe oh yeah I feel like I've always noticed that I knew they do it when I turn it on because I can see your heads pop up because it says it's everybody <laughs> all righty okay so what do we want to talk about where do we want to start what are your like what's your biggest observation from the conversation about creative hubs who made one and never used it again see at least one hand <laughs> uh, kate did you have something you want to say yeah, I, I did notice that people are either firmly in the digital or in the paper camp mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good, you know, clarity to have, to be firm one way or another. Um, and if you're not firm, that's, you know, to listen to others who are firm and say like, okay, why is this something that really works for them? Mm -hmm. uh, or even to experiment with both. Because it'll become clear pretty quickly if you never touch it again, that that might not be the best option. And even if it's paper, it might not be that that particular book was the wrong one because it wasn't something you touched regularly, for example. I thought it was interesting how many different kinds of creative hubs there were like even even just in the like six people I talked to is like, you know, some people use Trello versus OneNote versus like a three ring binder, you know, versus I use a bound notebook. And it's just like, you know, 
it, it, there's a lot of different ways to get the same information down. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really cool. That's what makes it so flexible to your needs and not, I don't want to prescribe, this is how you do it. Because then more, even more of you won't do it. So <laughs> that's the whole thing I want you all to do. I want you to say, I have a creative hub. You know, it might live in my phone or it's in this tiny little notebook. I have this coworker on campus. She uses this tiny little notebook and she like writes really tiny in these little boxes and she loves it and it works well for her. And I want the really, the biggest possible because I can't write a tiny notebook. <laughs> Lauren likes her tiny notebooks. I get it, I get it. All right, what else? Well, I think for me, I realized I need to decide what level of detail do I want to put in my creative hub? You know, um, somebody was talking about how they planned out their album, you know, and had an outline. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but, you know, I think for success, you have to kind of know yourself and how, how much detail, you know, do you want to be big picture or do you want every little thing? Mm -hmm. And then how to do that. So I have to think about that. Well, I think that that might also like kind of vary across project types. Um, I've, I typically for layout ideas or story ideas, I just have a list with general concept notes and I've tried to kind of flesh them out in Trello. And I, you know, I, I was keeping up with it because I was sharing it with others, but I didn't want to do it. It wasn't that helpful to me. You know, I had those had that information visually in front of me with my layout and my photos and it was all coming together that way. Um, whereas with a bigger project, like, you know, an album project, like my December daily, I like having a few more details of here's the inspiration and then here's the story and how's it all going to fit together. Um, and one thing, so that your answer might be different depending on what you're working on. What else? I think that's one of my issues when you talk the way you talked about that, Jennifer, is my need for some sort of consistency and continuity. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I have to keep tweaking and trying things and I have to move. It does me no good. And I can in an action, I can tell myself this, but it still feels off to try to go back and catch things up like I, I have to think this is not for reference this is for future use right I'm not creating some sort of book that people or I are even going to reference like but my brain my body my I feel like well okay this is working so everything should be the same but that's not true like okay start here go forward and that's kind of a little fight that I do with myself. I'm better at it than I used to be, thank goodness. But that, that continuity of, all right, well, it works for this one, but not for that one, that's okay. That's kind of something I struggle with. Well, I think with that is also that permission to like rewrite the list. And that could be digital or paper to say, okay, this list is not working for me anymore. I'm going to start from scratch and rewrite it with, you know, three of these 20 things because I'm no longer interested in the other 17. Um, yeah. And that's always going to happen. And to know that just because you crossed out one list, the next, the next list is the one you're working from now. There's that, uh, I don't know, live, living document type of situation with it. That was the one thing that I was kind of hearing from the various ladies is that, I don't use Trello or I'm, I'm a list person, but not necessarily a planner person. Yeah. So I think where I'm falling short is taking time to look at the plan or the list and long-term, short-term it, and really kind of, you know, work with it to keep it sort of as a living document, a living something that's, that's, you know, changing and, and helping me instead of just referring to lists and checking things off. I need to put more effort into the actual planning using it. Well, I think that's, you know, that's one of the hardest things is to cross-reference the stuff you want to do as, you know, an amorphous blob. And then the things you're going to do right now, this week, today, tomorrow, or, you know, next week, how do those connect? Like, how does the you know, that you want to make progress on something, make it to the plan for Friday. You know, that's, that's a, 
that's probably the biggest challenge of all. Let's make sure we've covered question one well before we go on. What formats are working well? Whether you've already called it a creative hub or you were just found out today that you've already been making a creative hub. Hi, I think for me, like I realized that having a, a book with sections for different things isn't what works for me. Like, I think I just need a notebook where I write down my thoughts and have lists and everything. I, for some reason, when I have different sections of things, I don't go to other sections. Yeah. Like I don't reference back to other things. Whereas with like, I guess kind of a bullet journal style with mm -hmm. an index. Um, it kind of clicked for me when you said that in the intro, like I use a bullet journal style for my planner. It's very like unique to me. I've modified it to, to my needs and it like that works. So why am I trying something different? Yes, that's huge. Great, I'm so glad, I'm so excited to see what, how you bring all that together. So I was also going to go back to like a disc bound system with different sections and I'm like, why am I doing that? <laughs> yeah, definitely turn would, to what, what you like best. Emily, go ahead. I, I was just thinking along the lines of what you said, Tina, that I was started in Trello and had this, but I never looked at it. And so it wasn't really doing, but I did have, I had moved all of my, my, my personal planner, my homeschool planner, my, all the notes that I clip from places into one note. And so I'm like, wait, why don't I just make a scrapbooking journaling notebook <laughs> or scrapbooking notebook? And so now I'm putting things in there and I actually see that I can, you know, and, and I'm, as I put things in them and I organize, like, I'm actually looking at it more. I could put a lot more in that, <laughs> in that section, but I also can then have it out of, you know, it's easy to see if I had layouts and story ideas and stuff. It's easy to organize for me mm -hmm. in there. And so it was more of a like, what am I using now? I'm using yeah. OneNote. Let's put it in there. Yeah. Cause you're already in there. Yeah. It's like, why am I, I can't, I'm not talented enough to look at multiple, <laughs> multiple areas yeah. on a daily or weekly basis. No, I get I it. I get it. Any other similar observations? I think for sure what, what you said about using what you're already using, I, I use the notes app on my phone and I use that many, many, many times a day for many, many, many different reasons. And so of course it makes more sense. I, I did try Trello and it didn't work for me, but once I started putting everything into Evernote and then the notes app, once I transferred everything over to there, it just... I'm looking at it all the time. It just makes so much more sense. But that doesn't mean that I can't take other people's ideas that they're using in Trello and kind of use it in my own way. Yeah, I adapt it. it. Yeah, and I, I think even though I don't use Trello, I like to look at people's boards and see what they're doing and see, can I take that idea and use it in notes? Yeah, I love that. I think that's this... This conversation is going to be so helpful for kind of continuing to update the conversation because when we first did this, it was, you know, here, create this book with sections and that doesn't work for everyone. And now there's just so many different tools that you can use to store this information, um, tools that you're already using. So I, I do use the notes app on my phone, but I also really like Google Keep. And part of that is because my husband has an Android. So we share notes in Google Keep. I see a thumbs up from Kalia there and Lauren. Um, yeah, I, I love it. And I keep so many things in, in Google Keep and find it really handy. Because I also, I, and you can use it from the web browser as well. So it's really nice. Question about Google Keep. How do you, for me, it was overwhelming because there wasn't, it took a lot more steps, I feel like, to like organize my notes because they were all just there. So yeah. do you have a, a way that works for you that you maybe organize them to like, these are my notes that I share with my husband and these are my like things I need to do tomorrow or, you know, recipes I want to get or whatever you put in there. Do you, or do you just put all one thing in there? 
I mean, I use the like the thumbtack, the pin for the things that I reference frequently. Mm, okay. And then everything then else is like below. Um, Oregon says keep also has labels. I haven't done like color coding and labeling and type that type of stuff. Okay. It's, I mean, it's it's kind of a mess. I do think because Notes has in 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 Apple, you can have folders. It's a little bit better to organize. Um, but there's certainly kind of visual ways you can organize it inside of Keep as well. Beatrix, go ahead. Um, I use Google Keep as well. And I was gonna say, I just last weekend figured out how to do the labels and the color coding. Uh -huh. And I realized that you can put multiple labels on each one of them Ooh. and it's made a game changer. So I could go through and say, oh, this is a December daily note because I record all my notes as I'm driving for the, my journaling in yeah. Google Keep. And so I could say, this is December daily prompt, but it also might end up being a scrapbook prompt or a bucket list. And so you can put multiple layers. So when you search, you can search for whatever your tags are, your labels. Fun. And then I also went through and color coded anything that had to do with scrapbooking is one color. Anything that has to do with, you know, Christmas ideas is another color. Very cool. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> what if you're someone who like goes across operating systems too, whether between your computer, your tablet, your phone, and then your family? I think Google Keep is more flexible that way, unless you're an all Apple family. Kalia? Yeah, I, I was just going to add to the Google Keep discussion. I um I use it for, it's very handy for jotting down notes and then throw in a lot of stuff together that belong together. Um, so if you have events and things that are coming up, it lets you put, um, you know, different um, upload screenshots and things like that mm -hmm. together, like schedules of a, a screenshot of a schedule or something like that, or screenshot of something you want to use possibly in your scrapbook or in your memory keeping. Um, you can do that. And like she said, the journaling is good for that. But the labeling part is what is very, very important to me because um, if I don't label something, it's going to get lost in the abyss of, of notes. But I use... Google Keep for a, for a lot of things just to kind of keep track of what's going on, a quick list of to-do lists, a quick, you know, I, I think a few years ago, I used it to organize all of my photo albums because I was just sitting there one day. I was like, let me just make a list of all the photo albums I already have and then what I need to work on. And so that was a good list. And then from there, I was able to create other ways of setting up my projects, but it's a good tool to catch things you know, just to throw stuff in there and to come back to later. It's almost like a digital bullet journal in terms of less organization and structure than something like Trello or Asana, um, a little more organic. So yeah. maybe sometimes you don't feel as like right. cleaned in by perfection and structure and you can just throw right. stuff in there and, and the tools help you find it between the search and, and your color coding all that. So. And it's, it's good that you can use it on on your web web browser too. Like you don't have to always try to squint and look at it on your little phone, but you can <laughs> pull it up on your computer and use it from there. Yeah, awesome. One more note, not on Google Keep, but about like the form your Creative Hub takes. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that occurred to me is that for, especially since I use paper, for actual next actions, I'm not sure my creative hub is the right home for that. I was actually mm -hmm. thinking I should get a whiteboard and just put it on the wall and just like for every project, here is the next step that I could be doing. Because then I sit down to scrap and I always have the question, oh, what do I do next? And it's easy to just kind of work on the same project because it's already in your head. Whereas, you know, maybe I could actually work on, you know, a project that feels like it's stalled because in the back of my head, I don't really know what I should be doing next. Well, and I think having that next action flag for multiple projects will help you think about it too so you feel more prepared to take that action that's a great idea melissa uh, similarly oh sorry of course my dog's gonna start barking um <laughs> i use trello for my creative hub but i don't necessarily put like next actions or even like weekly to-do lists on there. I have like a monthly list of um, kind of my like creative goals. And um, 
then I use a paper planner that I plan weekly. And so when I um, am doing my planning in there for the week, I make sure I open Trello and I look at my like monthly list or maybe like, you know, my list of where I am on certain classes and pick things from there that I want to try to get done for the week and write those in my planner. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. All right, who else wants to share? Any details that you guys thought of that you don't want to keep track of or things that you want to start keeping track of? Um, it was in, in talking to our community to, where I realized I wanted to keep better track of class materials that I actually wanted to go through. Um, you know, there's with that, there's also like the levels of detail. Like, is it, you know, the class itself? Is it every single lesson? Do you want to have a full checklist? Um, I think for me, it's more of just like a reminder of like, oh, I want to dig into this content that and I want to make this a priority during, during a given period of time. And so having it on my list will help me assign it to you know, this month I want to work on this particular class. Anybody have a list you made and then abandoned? <laughs> a lot of people, yeah. That's a lot of lists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm laughing to myself because I was saying in one of the groups that I used a paper planner and I had made this nice spreadsheeted list of classes that I, all the classes I signed up for and then, then which ones I've done. And, and then I'm like, oh, this is super depressing because there's so many of them that are long abandoned. Yeah. And I'm looking at it now. I'm like, I'm just going to take this out of the notebook and we're going to use this section for something else because <laughs> this is not productive. So I'm probably never going to look at this stuff again. Yeah, I think I have a certain degree of like trust that if something is important enough to me, it's going to come back around somehow and make it to the a new list rather than seeing like a long list of stuff that makes me feel guilty or sad or any kind of negative feelings about it. Um, even for a long time, I didn't even keep a list of like which December dailies needed finishing. And then I then it became a priority. I want to finish these. So I made the list and it became an incentive. But for a long time, I'm like, I'm not thinking about that list because I know I have a lot to do. Yeah, I like to keep the lists. I have all things that I'm excited to work on that I'm like, ooh, I can't wait yeah. to do that. That's a great perspective. Emily says, I think it's highly individual where whether a naggy list of to-dos is motivating or depressing. And maybe, yeah, I may vary you personally given the day or or the, the what, what the list is. So we all kind of respond to that differently. I think with that um, class list, list there, Sue, like it might serve as like a reminder the next time you, like I know I feel that way about all my classes I have left undone or abandoned or whatever it's like uh like I'm excited about it right now but how's it going to feel when if it gets on this list <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. well and I'm thinking like well maybe I'll go through the list instead of just tossing it I'll like go through it and see if there's anything that now I mean some of this is original big picture classes so that says like how old it is oh, wow I'm like <laughs> which we still have access to, but I'm like, yeah. yeah, okay. Maybe there's one or two things that I might want to revisit and I'll just like let the rest of it go. I think it takes- That feels good too. Yeah. It takes practice to let things go and to know that like, it's okay to not have all the information. Um, I recently got rid of a lot of like old notebooks of like simple scrapper plans. Cause I'm always like making these lists of like, you know, themes for refresh retreats and, you know, things we're going to talk about and presentations I want to give. And, you know, sometimes they end up in Trello in a plan and sometimes they just 
disappear and you know there's not that much value in going back i just flip through and like if nothing stands out it's, it's going in the trash because good ideas will always come back so kind of as we start trying to wrap up here how can you make sure that your creative hub is a productivity tool and not an abandoned project i think we've already talked a lot about that in terms of choosing the right format for you making sure that the lists really suit you well and are ones that are going to motivate and inspire you to keep making progress. What else? Keita? Um, for me, at least, where it lives is going mm -hmm. to be key. Because if it doesn't live near my planner, I won't look at it and I won't factor in its contents when I'm planning my week. There you go. Love that. Iris? This was my particular challenge that I wanted to get ideas for. Mm -hmm. And two people uh, gave me some good ideas in our um, in our groups. Um, I want to make sure I credit the right person. So Kellia uh, mentioned that she used to do these during the scheduled crops. So she would a lot some of that time for Trello admin and I was thinking yeah that's a good idea because I do attend a crop I host one and so maybe incorporating that into a crop and then the other idea was Evelyn um, suggested we try to see if we could sync so if you put due dates in Trello if can you sync that to your, your Google calendar or your iCalendar or something like that I think so I, I don't do that myself but I, I would think there's something that connects that. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to investigate because if it's not in my digital calendar, it doesn't get done. So um, I think that would be a, a strategy for me is to make sure that those due dates are actually showing up on my daily calendar as well, or weekly or monthly. There you go. Great strategies. I, I really like the idea of planning a recurring time, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly. Um, I've heard a lot that monthly does work really well, but I think weekly can work well as, uh, in addition. Um, whatever that is, like pick the time that in the place that you're going to do that. And if you can pair it with something else, you know, uh, stacking your habits, as James Clear says, can really be effective. For sure. Thanks, Iris. All right, other thoughts? What are some next steps that you want to take for your creative hub? Lorraine's taking her taking those steps right now. Tell us what you're doing. Looking for the unmute key is what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> So I previously, most of my first section was taken up with tracking post-its for my Japan album, which I have accepted is not something that I'm working on right this moment. Um, and so now I'm instead setting up some tracking post-its for some other albums um, that I'm more interested in working on right now. So I can keep track of the steps. Oh, I like how it sounds like your album is kind of reusable. Like your, your creative hub is reusable because you're using the post-it notes in the section, so. I get, I get too stressed when I write things down because then it's like, well, then I can't change it. Yeah. Um, so I, I realize these post-it notes are the perfect size for my album, so I can just stick them on. That's awesome. I love it. Melissa. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that, um, well, so I've started a creative hub in Trello and I've never really done one before and I use the template. Uh, and so I'm trying to just figure out like what's working or what will work for me and what won't. Um, and so this whole conversation tonight has been really awesome just to kind of hear what other people have been doing, um, what has worked and what hasn't worked for them, whether they're doing Trello or another digital one or a paper one. I mean, it's just really really timely for me because um, awesome. I'm ideally hoping to have something kind of ready to go for 2023 or the planning party is kind of coming up. So I'm just, yeah. kind of, I think, um, 
but something in the second group, um, Nadia and Helen and I were talking about, and they actually had, I can't remember which one had, had it, but we were just talking about how the, you could either use Trello for, or any creative hub for capturing or for planning or for organizing or for all or a combination of those. And I just thought that was really interesting because um, maybe it was in the class and I just forgot it. Um, but it, it's just interesting that even though like we all call it a creative hub, it has different aspects of all those and more in it. And so really a huge takeaway for me is just like whatever is working for you, like keep doing that and maybe let go of some of the things that aren't working for you. So just wanted to share that. Oh, I love that distinction of, of function for you because we all kind of need different supports depending on how our, our brains work and how we like to, to keep information. So that's awesome. And with regards to the template, it definitely has, you know, all the options and you should, you know, delete or put aside the options that may not work well for you because, you know, if you fill everything out, then it's just good. It might become something that's too overwhelming to maintain. So, um, but it does give you lots of good, lots of starting points for different types of cards you can create. Um, Suzanne, did you have a question? You're muted though. I can see your mouth moving, but you're muted. See, I'm obviously not very good at this. That's okay. I was, I was trying to figure out how all the, everybody was raising their hands and I didn't know and I looked it up on my phone and then I tried it and I was hoping you didn't see me try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you popped to the top corner of my screen so that's why I noticed okay. all the people, so. All right, so much for my plan done clandestine operation. Thanks. It's okay. No problem. Yeah. So if you don't know how to raise your hand, it is under the reactions button on, uh, in, if you're on the computer, that might be a little bit more hidden um, on a mobile device. Um, Kali asked in the, in the comments, when is the planning party? It is November 13th through 17th. Um, so for those of you who are members, it'll be like basically immediately after our refresh retreat, which is going to be a little bit more um, light, let's just say, uh, given that we're going to be doing a lot of thinking during the planning party. Um, registration does open on Monday and the planning party is completely free for everyone. So this is our big annual tradition. This is a time to get together and think about what went well this year, what didn't go as well, and how could we have an amazing creative year next year. Um, we're going to give you some new tools to do that. And of course, some, you know, some not so new tools as well. I think we we love to bring back some of the things that we've created in the past that are helpful. Um, so we're going to be taking you through this journey to help you build a little bit of a calendar for the year. So you know kind of what your priorities are and when you might be working on them and then kind of what some of your kind of underlying all year long um, focal points are, whether that's things you're creating or things that you want to do elsewhere in your hobby in terms of cre uh, consuming, connecting and corralling to to support all that creativity that you're putting into your effort, putting into your scrapbooking, excuse me. Um, so yeah, registration does open Monday. We're announcing it on the podcast episode. Link will be up. It'll be on the homepage. You'll get an email. There'll be lots of emails <laughs> over the next few weeks. And during that time, we'll also be making all the full announcements of what 2023 is going to be looking like at Simple Scrapper. So some of the best stuff will continue and we have some new things in store. So we're really excited about all of that. Any final thoughts or questions? All right, well, thank you all for contributing to an awesome conversation tonight. I really appreciate all the different feedback and uh, different ideas, different insights because I think this is all going to give, <laughs> whether you're here live or those of you watching in the replay, lots of different directions and inspiration for refining or starting your own creative hub. Suzanne says, thanks. I have six ideas to work on from this discussion to begin a creative hub tool. Time well spent. Awesome. I'd love to hear that. So yeah, I definitely can't wait to see what you guys create. 
We're going to be talking about the Creative Hub a little bit more in the coming year. We want to make sure that we are supporting everyone in creating and building and using this tool effectively, um, because we know how important it is and how, how effective it can be. Uh, once you get all that stuff out of your head and onto paper, whether that's real or digital paper. So I hope you all have a great weekend and I will see you again soon. Take care.